Yesterday, Sierraji spoke about how to apply labels and observe whatever is arising in one's body now that we are practicing Satipatthana. And what he spoke about yesterday is from the explanations of the Buddha's words. The Buddha himself said, Buddhang Buddhato Pasati, that one should see, one should look, one should dwell, observing what actually is, what exists as it is. And he used the present tense, he used the verb Pasati, that means the, to see in the present moment. So what is it that we should see? What should we look at? We should see or look at what is arising, what arises due to causes and is really evident. It's directly, um, it's right in front of us to be seen. And an example that Sayadaji mentioned was Uh, And he told us to try for ourselves making a fist. And uh, we try making a fist, but without doing it, doing any awareness, without applying our attention. Make a fist and then stretch the hand back out. So one might know uh, that it's a hand. One might have that much awareness or one might know that there's a fist or that it's stretching, the hand is uh, stretched out. Humans and animals both know on this level, this is not special. This is not uh, what we're talking about now, the way yogis know, is to go beyond the form, beyond the hand, beyond the manner or the, the position that it is in of the of being in a fist or being extended to see the true nature that is really there so there in the moment of clenching the fist stiffness tension tightness there's a series of physical phenomena that happens physical physical is hap- physical things are happening in a series and there's discomfort also. And this is undeniable. It's really there. There's also the intention to make the fist. That's mental. That's nama. And the clenching, there's tightness, stiffness, and so on. So these are true nature. This is true nature. But at the start, We can't see this. At the start, we're just trying to collect our mind. We're trying to get our mind together because all our lives, we've just let our minds go. We've neglected our minds. So now we're just trying to get our mind together. It's not that one can't see uh, right at the start, but that it's not easy to do. So how can we get something that is extremely beneficial, extremely valuable, without putting in effort? When we buy something that is valuable, uh, that is worth a lot, we have to pay a high price. And here in the practice, what do we get? We get purity of mind. We get the ability to distinguish between mind and matter, nama and rupa to see how they are related as cause and effect, to see how these mind and matter arise and pass away. They're unsatisfactory, they have no self. So one can see their various uh, characteristics. And in the end, one realizes a guaranteed peaceful happiness. So this is very valuable. The yogis should understand uh, by now that this is a very valuable, 
these benefits are very valuable and therefore Sayadaw has been urging the yogis according to what the Buddha said. He's not just imagining things and making things up and telling us from his imagination. What Sayadaw is speaking about is, com is combination of what is in the text and what happens practically. So people have come here um, to get a clean mind, as, as we have, are doing now, to see the true Dhamma stage by stage and to get guaranteed happiness. So whether one understands the benefits of the task a little bit or a lot, one should understand about the benefits. So one can learn by hearing, by discussion, by reading. And whichever way one uses to learn, what is important is understanding about the benefits of the practice. And this is called understanding in this way, by learning, it is called sutta mayanyana learning by reading, discussion, discussing, hearing. And to some extent also, one can reflect, use our own reflective ability at this stage. Um, and this is chinta miya jnana, that is reflective knowledge. So neither of these types of knowledge, uh, sutta, maya, sutta maya jnana or chinta miya jnana, um, that is, what one has heard or what one has reflected about. Neither of these types of knowledge can know true nature, not even a single bit. Only the knowledge that is gained through developing the mind, bhavana, mayanyana, can see direct knowledge, can see true nature. So knowing the benefits of satipatthana, one one must have faith um, and a desire, therefore, because of having faith in the benefits, desire to get the benefits. So one shouldn't have, uh, one's faith should be strong so that one's desire to get the benefits will also be strong. One shouldn't approach one's work with the idea, well, is this really true? Is it really going to work? You know, uh, one shouldn't be half-hearted about it. So, uh, and one also shouldn't just note, observe, uh, stop and go. One should be continuous, work continuously. The yogis just have one job, and that is to put the mind on their body and to observe, uh, and look carefully at what happens in every moment what look carefully at the newly arising objects. That's the job, and later results will come from doing this. So a simile, an, an analogy for what we do is working a math problem. When we do a math problem, we need to know how to work the problem. And so for basic math, we need to know the different types of operations, how to add, how to subtract, multiply, divide. So we need to know the basic uh, method for working the problem. And then we have to work it out. And we work it out step by step. Um, and not, so this is not uh, this is not a situation where we're going to rely on a calculator to do our work. We have to, um, in solving the math problem, we should do it step by step, not skipping over any step. Because if we skip over in working the math problem, if we skip a step, our, our result is going to be wrong. So anyone who has worked a math problem knows this. And so we have to also, in practice, we have to use the method that has been explained here. 
and go step by step. So each step of, the, of working the problem, each step of the way in the practice, gives us one part of the result. It gets us one bit further to the result. And in the case of the math problem, when we get to the end and then we can check our work and see from, uh, we can check our answer and we can see that the result is correct. So in the math problem, we're not uh, allowed to skip an operation. We have to do every single step uh, and to reach the answer. And yogis too, they cannot skip over the steps. They've got to go step by step. So one has to start with faith in the, in the practice, faith in the benefits it brings. And true desire to get the benefits because from this effort will come and from that there will be um, automatically sati, samadhi, and panya awareness, concentration, and wisdom will arise. So an analogy for how we have to work is that of working out the math problem. When we have a human life for every person, what is important is to be truly human, to have a human heart, human mentality, and to gain knowledge that is special, special human knowledge. And this, these are all important, but this last one is the most important. So one who wants to gain special knowledge one who wants to gain all these things, especially special knowledge, must have five qualities. And these are, first of all, faith. Second of all, health. Third, honesty. Fourth, ardent effort. And fifth, one has to see how uh, how what is related as cause and effect arises and then passes away. So if one has these five qualities, then continuing to practice, one is sure to get special knowledge. And this is what Sayadoji would like to speak about today as a way to encourage the yogis. Among these five qualities, the first is faith faith and confidence. Now Buddhists, from the start, they have faith in the Buddha, but not because they understand the true qualities of the Buddha. So this faith that arises knowing the qualities of the Buddha is better. And uh, if one is an individual that doesn't have faith in persons, in personalities, then to have faith in the straight path of practice, to have faith in this Dhamma that, would, that is well taught by the Buddha, Svakato, Svakato Bhagavata Dhammo, that is the Dhamma that was taught by the Buddha, is well taught. When one puts it into practice, the results are consistent with the practice. And within this, of course, there's the understanding that when one does something good, it brings good results. That bad things, that th things done with bad intentions, uh, bring bad results. This, this is a basic part of the Dhamma. So, if one has faith in the Dhamma, or in the Buddha, and then knows the benefits of the practice, one has to have enough health in order to do the practice. So nowadays, there are very, very few people who can really be said to be healthy. So, in such times, one can say that if one has 
is healthy enough to eat and healthy enough to sleep a sufficient amount, then one is healthy enough to work, to do this work. So this is, this means that uh, having good health is a relative quality. It's not absolute. One has to have enough health to be able to do this work. And that's based on being able to eat enough and be able to, being able to sleep enough. The third quality that one needs to have is an upright mind. One needs to be honest. Now, everyone, all human beings, no one is free of fault. The only difference is how big or how small the faults are. So when one has faults, you know, sometimes we have a fault, we did something wrong, and we're afraid to admit it because we don't want others to know. So then one hides, one hides what one, the wrong thing that one did. And this is called maya, hiding the faults that one really has. And um, one has to develop the courage, not uh, the courage to be able to face one's faults. One has to develop this courage. And sometimes, on the other hand, one pretends to have qualities that one doesn't really have. And some yogis are like this. They pretend, but they do not really have the qualities. They want people to think highly of them, and so they pretend. But this is not good. This is called sateya pretending to have good qualities that one doesn't really have. So one can't do this. Neither of these things is okay for a yogi. So as long as a yogi is free of this covering up faults one has and pretending about qualities one doesn't really have, if, if we don't do those two things, then we can set, be said to be honest we can set, be said to be upright. Yogis, when they speak, they should not speak from their imagination. They need to say, they need to report what really happened, not, not what they think happened. So if a yogi has these first three qualities, then that's quite good. Faith, health, and honesty, upright mind. A yogi who has these three qualities can be taught. The teacher can teach the yogi. So one should understand that these three qualities are very important. And for the, um, the teachers are ready to instruct the yogis in the practice. So on the yogi's side, one should make sure to have these first three qualities. These are very important. Faith, good health, good enough health, and an upright mind, especially an upright mind. So you have to show how you worked when you, um, when you talk with the teacher, and you also need to listen carefully to the teacher's instructions. So both of, both of these are involved in our mind being upright. And then one has to make effort. So in making effort, that means that during one's waking hours, one always needs to be applying effort moment after moment to observe the arising object. If one tries, one will come to be able to distinguish between mind and matter. One will come to see how they are related as cause and effect. And one will come to see how these mind and matter, these mental and physical dhammas, which are related as cause and effect, arise and then pass away. One will see how this happens very, very quickly. 
And when one does, one will feel very satisfied. One will feel joy. And of course, when these arise, one has to note them too. One has to understand that there are better things to come. One has to continue to make effort. One has to increase one's effort, make art and effort. So when one has fulfilled the last quality of these five, when all these five qualities are fulfilled and one has seen the fast arising and passing away of phenomena related as cause and effect, then when one continues to practice, in this lifetime one is sure to gain the Dhamma. In the world, when people are nearsighted, then they can't see what ordinary uh, people with ordinary vision can see. And so, in order to increase their ability to see, people wear glasses, and they have to increase the uh, they have to make the lens have the correct power to improve their vision. So some people need to improve their vision by five times. Some people need a lens that provides 10 times the power that they have. Some people need 20 times, and so on. And so the glass in the lens of the glasses has to be ground so that it provides enough power for the person to be able to see. And here, uh, we can't just use ordinary glass when we try to see with the practice. We need to, uh, we need to have some power. And we need to, in gla like in glasses, we don't just use plain glass. We have to grind the glass so that it um, gives our eye the right amount of power. Yogis, too, in order to see mind and matter, which are extremely subtle, in order to see how these are related as cause and effect, and how they change, for this knowledge, we need our mind needs to have power, added power. And the first of these powers that we add to the mind is that of faith and also desire to get the benefits of the practice. And then the next power to be added is effort. In addition, we have to add steadfast mindfulness, the collected mind, and aiming. Aiming is very important. Just like we have to grind the glass of a of a real lens properly, so too our aim has to be accurate. So we have to add these powers to our mind. And just like our glasses need to have the correct power in order for us to be able to see correctly, our mind needs to have effort, sati, samadhi, aiming, and in the early part, it also needs faith and desire. So as we practice, the powers, these powers become, they increase. They become amazingly strong and knowledge arises. So only if we grind the glass will we see properly and this is an analogy. So we have to have the desire to know what is really there. And then we have to apply effort every second of the time. From that, sati and samadhi will develop. And when our powers, when these powers develop, strongly to be strong enough then one will see the very small details of what is happening in one's being so one can't do this work carelessly 
One can't just look here and there. One should do actions, small actions such as bending, stretching, turning and so on. One should do these things slowly and carefully. One can't move about just the way one moves around when one's on the outside. One can't do things in an ordinary way. If one can apply oneself like this with care, then in one or two days, one will, uh, one will see special things. And the more days one makes effort like this, the more and more special one's experience will become. So Sayadawji says to try and see for yourself. One who wants to see Nama and Rupa and how these are related as cause and effect, to see how these mental and physical phenomena related as cause and effect arise and pass away. One who wants to gain guaranteed happiness. For such a one, the Buddha said, to put these powers in your mind, to develop these mental powers. These powers are not imaginary, they are practical. First of all, knowing the benefits of satipatthana, one should have faith and desire to get the benefits. And this is putting the first power in one's mind. We, put, we can put this power in our mind because of knowing the benefits and having the desire to gain, to gain them. Without knowing the benefits of the practice without, um, or without having any desire to gain the benefits, then we can't say to have put this power in our mind. One who has faith in the benefits and desire to gain them will surely make effort, and this is the second power to put in one's mind, ardent effort. One should try every second of the time to observe what is happening, what is arising. Third, one needs aiming, accurate aim. The mind should be focused accurately. In that case, then sati will automatically arise and penetrate into the object. Samadhi, concentration, will follow directly when there is sati. And when these energies are, are fulfilled, then one will see the way one can see with a magnifying glass. One will see very clearly, and this is knowledge. So if one wants to see the true Dhamma clearly, then one should put these powers into one's mind. And if one does, within a few days one will see very, very clearly. So today, Yogi Sayadoji has urged the yogis to develop these powers, to put these powers into your mind. So if Sayadoji has to um, provide kind of a guideline or a rule for what to do, he's, he says, well, if one observes, if one doesn't observe these, the objects that arise, the freshly arising object within one's being, if one doesn't observe these, then in that moment, one's mental power declines. So uh, he made up a saying that not observing, not knowing, then power declines. On the other hand, if one observes and knows, then power builds up. So basically, if one doesn't observe, then the mental powers decline. 
if one does observe, then they build up. And so when one stands up, when you go from sitting down, from being seated to standing up, if one does this really quickly, if one does this quickly, if one goes from standing to sitting quickly, if when one walks, one looks here and there, then the power that was already in one's mind leaks out in those moments. The power leaks out and if we let that happen often enough, all the power that was in our mind will just leak out and we won't have any more power, any more mental power. So if we have come here to practice, then we have to try to put these powers in our mind every waking moment. So remember that if we don't observe and then we miss, the mental energy declines. And if, on the other hand, if we observe, then the mental power, mental energy, builds up. If one works as instructed, then one will for sure come to a conclusion about the Dhamma, about the truth of the Dhamma. One will, uh, one's faith will be confirmed and then one won't back up. One will never back up from the practice and one will be smiling as one continues to do one's work. So Sayadoji would like to see this happen. He would like to see the yogis in this situation. So he asked that the yogis always remember this little saying that not, uh, not observing, not knowing, the powers decline. One's powers decline. Observing and knowing, one's powers build up. And with this in mind, you may you be able to try every second of the time and gain special dhamma.